Hello, welcome to our next section, 7.3 station models, and our goal for today is to create a station model. So what is a station model? A station model is right, shown right here in the picture, all right, and this is a simplified symbol that shows the current weather conditions for a particular location. If we look on page 13, we'll see this key to weather map symbols, all right, and here is the explanation. And over here is what the station model should look like. So I want you to write that here. Let's put a star and put this is how it should look. All right, so notice that over here it tells you what the um, units are. It gives you a description of each factor, of each um, variable. And here is what exactly it should look like once it's complete. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Do not draw it like this. If you put the symbols, the um, units on there, or anything like that, it will not be marked correct. So let's take a look at the different variables on our station model. In the very center, if it's not colored in at all, that means it's a clear day. The more colored in it is, the more cloud coverage there is. So you can see we go from scattered clouds, which would be about 25%, partly cloudy at about half, mostly cloudy, and overcast, which would mean completely colored in fully cloudy skies, 100% cloud coverage. Our next factor is temperature and dew point temperature. So temperature and dew point temperature, if we look right here, here's our temperature. Notice it's in the upper left-hand corner and dew point here in the lower left-hand corner. And when they're put into station model code, there are no degree signs, no units at all. Okay, so it goes from this, goes over here, and our dew point temperature is written over on the bottom left. Next factor is wind direction. The line is drawn from the circle from the direction the wind is blowing. So let's label our compass directions so that we don't make any mistakes. So I'm just off to the side here I'm going to remind myself of my compass directions. So that as I fill these in I am careful to not make a silly mistake. If we have an easterly wind, the wind is coming from the east, so we're going to draw our line out from the east. Southwesterly wind, take a look. Southwest is down here, so we're going to draw our line southwest. And a northerly wind would be at the top, so this would be our northerly wind. Our next variable is wind speed. This is plotted by something called feathers, and each feather is added up to tell how fast the wind is blowing, and it's done in knots. So a flag, which looks like a triangle, would mean 50 knots, a line is 10 knots, and a half a line is 5 knots. If there's no wind symbol, the wind is calm. So here we have a line showing the wind from the west, and the flag means 50 knots, two full lines or 10 knots each, and a half a line is 5. So this would be a total of 50, 60, 75 knot wind. This one would show a wind blowing from the northeast with 10, 20, 5, 25 knots. And if you have five knots, just to make it not confusing, it wouldn't be at the end. It would be a little bit up, and that would mean five knots, a half a line drawn with nothing at the very end. And if you have nothing at all, this is a calm wind, no wind at all. Hi, Molly. You're oinking? What? Oink. All right, so let's practice with the wind speed. If we want to have a 15-knot westerly wind from the west, Let's put our compass directions. From the west, 15 knots. 10, 15. 30 knot northeasterly wind. So northeast. So northeasterly wind and 30 knots. 10, 20, 30. And finally, so southwesterly. Southwest and five knots, you'd go in a little bit and draw your half line. Here's an example of station models on a weather map. So you can see your station models have the, this is just showing wind direction. It's showing the direction the wind is coming from. So you can see here on this side, they're coming from the north, which means they're all blowing this way. If you come down to this section, they're all coming from the southwest, blowing this way. Okay, visibility is shown here. It tells you how many miles of clear transparent atmosphere there is. So on a very foggy day, your visibility would be very low. On a clear day, it would be much higher. So in this example, it's half a mile of visibility. And we put this 
over here on the left side <laughs> and with no <laughs> units. Okay, amount of precipitation. This shows how much precipitation there's been in the last six hours. It's given right here on the bottom right. And this comes to this side. And notice we do have a decimal, but no units. Present weather. If you look right below, there's a section called present weather on the reference table. There's all different weather conditions given. And this is placed onto your um, station model right next to visibility on the left side of the station model. And it goes just like that, just the symbol. And this here tells us that it's snowing. Barometric pressure is simply air pressure. But we need to put this into station model code. So since it's a simplified version, we have to convert this. It's always in millibars. And we use only the last three numbers minus the decimal point. So if we know the barometric pressure here is 1002.2, if we're going to put this in the station model, the rule is just the last three digits minus the decimal. So we're going to take this, and our station model code would be 0, 2, 2. All right, on this one, we have the last three digits minus the decimal. So it would be 9, 5, 9. Last three digits minus the decimal point, 125. And this is what would actually go onto the station model. This is a station model code. And these last three minus the decimal are 885. All right, so putting it into station model code, not too bad. Now, coming out of station model code and putting it back into millibars. For this, we're going to use something called the rule of 500. So we need to take our station model code and put it back into millibars. So the rule is, if your three-digit station model code is below 500, we add a 10 in front and a decimal between the last two digits. If the three-digit station model code is above 500, add a 9 in front and a decimal between the last two digits. So here in our first example, it's 410. So this would be below 500. So we will add a 10 in front of this number. So we have 10, 4, 1, 0. And then we put a decimal back in between those last two digits. For 987, we're above 500, so we're going to add a 9 in front. So 9, 9, 8, 7, and we put our decimal back. For this one here, we have 872. This is above 500, so we will add in our 9 in front and a decimal between the last two digits. And 012 is below 500, so we add a 10 in front and we put our decimal in between the last two digits. So this is the rule for going into and out of station model code. The barometric trend, this tells us the change in air pressure in millibars over the last three hours. So this is actually important because a falling barometer means warmer weather and more humid air are coming in. So generally that usually means um, poorer weather conditions because as your pressure falls, we're going into lower pressure, which is what typically brings our stormy weather. And if a ri the barometer is rising, it usually means you have cooler, drier weather coming in. So in station model code, the decimal is removed. So if you look on your reference table, it shows that station model code with no decimal. So if the pressure rose 3.0 millibars in the last three hours, the station model shows plus 30. What type of weather should we expect? So if the um, station model shows it's rising, we should expect cooler, drier weather. If the pressure fell 1.8 millibars in the last three hours, the station model code is negative 18. Weather conditions should become warmer and more humid. So let's put this all together now and practice making our station model. We have a wind direction of southwest. So again, let's put it off to the side, write down our compass direction so we don't make any silly mistakes. We have southwest wind, so southwest. A wind speed of 15 knots, so 10, 15. A temperature of 78 degrees Fahrenheit, so our temperature always goes on the upper left, no units. Our dew point temperature of 77, down here, no units. A barometric reading, a barometer reading of 998.4 millibars. So again, we take our last three digits minus the decimal, and we put on the station model code 984. All right, our trend is falling, 2.3 millibars. So our trend goes right here. We minus the decimal. If it's falling, it's a negative, And we remove the decimal, so minus 23. 
The present weather is drizzle. So if you look at your um, reference table, look up the symbol for drizzle. And that would be, it looks like a comma right here to the left. Cloud coverage is overcast, so we're going to fill this entire center in. All right, that's about as filled as I can get it. Visibility is half a mile, so our visibility half a mile goes right here next to our present weather symbol. And amount of precipitation is 1.5 inches, and we simply put our 1.5 right here on the bottom. And our station model is complete. And again, thanks for watching, and that completes our station model presentation.